what's up? And welcome back to the video, or I guess maybe not welcome back because maybe I haven't been here. So let's, you know what, just welcome to the video. In this one, we are gonna be looking at Affinity Photos Pen Tool. And I'm not gonna lie, Affinity Photos Pen Tool is a little weird to get a hold of it first, like to, to use, but once you do, like any Affinity tool, super, super powerful for not only creating lines and shapes, but really, really precise selections. So I like to always start by resetting my studio back to default, just to make sure our screens can look similar. And I do that by going up to Window, Studio, and Reset Studio. Okay, now your pen tool, where is it? It is located with your tools on the left-hand side here. If you look down, you'll see something that looks like a pen. And you can either click on this or hit P on your keyboard, which is the shortcut. So I'm going to select that. When I do, my mouse is going to change to, you guessed it, a pen. Now the settings you're worried about are at the very top here. There is stroke, which is the color of the actual stroke you're going to make. I'll turn mine to black. Next is the line. If I click on this, I have this slider bar, which is going to control the width of the line I'm creating. And you can see as I do it in real time, the line changes up at the top here. There's also options to make it a dotted line or start it or end it with um, triangles or circles, but we'll do that in another video. So I've got my um, thing selected here. The next thing you're worried about is mode. Now the ones we're going to worry about in this video, just to get started, are standard pen mode, which is this one here. We're gonna worry about line mode for straight lines, which is right here. And we're gonna worry about rubber band mode, which is for sort of forming around and making curves. So let's just get started with regular pen mode. So I've got my pen selected here. I'm just gonna click. And when I do, you see the square, nothing really happens. It's waiting for me to finish the line. So if I click here or here or here, it's gonna create it. So I'm gonna click here. And you can see when I've done this in the right-hand side in your layers panel, it's created a curve layer here. And I'm just gonna click and just draw anything out here. I'm going to close the shape up and you can see now I have this shape. Now, if I click on this, I can always change this. So I can go to the stroke color and I can change that to basically uh, whatever color I want. Uh, once my mouse starts responding, oh, there we go. There we go. Change this color and I can change the width. Something else I want to point out, you'll see a lot of these slider bars in Affinity Photo under the effects or different options and they always max out at 100. But you can type whatever number you want in here and it'll, it'll do it. It just by default go, only goes to 100. So just keep that in mind if you're doing any effects or anything with this width bar, you can always make it bigger. So that is just the basics of drawing out in pen mode and drawing a shape. So let's get rid of that. And we'll just quickly do, um, I'll show you line mode really fast, which is doing straight lines. And the best way to do this is if you hold shift on your keyboard. So I have pen mode selected at the top here, or line mode, I'm sorry. And if I just hold shift and drag out, it'll give me super straight, perfect lines. I'm just holding shift and clicking and dragging lines. So pen mode is good for doing underlines or boxing things in or doing stuff like that. So that is uh, why I use that a lot because it makes things really clean and straight. And the last option for uh, pen mode, which I like to use, is called rubber band mode. So I'm going to select pen mode, but I'm also going to select rubber band mode. And we'll do it in the next, uh, not the next example, but I'll show you how this works. If I click, you can see where the line is going, right? So say I clicked here. Now the thing about this is once you click it, you can drag these lines. See these little handles that are going sort of uh, up top to bottom? These are called bezier handles. And it'll allow you to drag the curve around so you can form it around the shape that you're trying to make. And if I just click, you can see it's kind of showing me where it's gonna go. And I can drag it out, drag it out, and close the shape up. And just like anything, because it's another curve, I can change the color, I can change the size, um, and that's how that works. So let's just do a quick example um, to show you how it works for isolation. So I'm gonna turn this building on. Now, I could probably use another tool to isolate this. I just wanna show you a simple example of using the pen tool to isolate things. So I'm gonna take my pen tool out. I'm gonna bring this down to like nothing because I don't, I don't really wanna see it as I'm going around. Uh, let's put it to white maybe. So I've got my pen tool out. I've got my layer selected. I wanna isolate this building. I wanna get rid of the sky. So I'm gonna zoom in and I'm just gonna quickly eye this up. I'm not gonna to try to do a crazy example here. I'm just going to do this as I eye this up. I'm just clicking around the building where I think it's lining up. Now, I have the building selected, but you'll see that it's not really closed. It wants me to close the shape. So I'm just gonna go off the canvas here and it doesn't matter There's what, how, how I do this. There's no right or wrong. I'm just getting from A to B here and I'm gonna close the shape up. Now, you'll notice now that the shape is closed up in the top left corner, pay attention, there's mask and there's selection. In this case, because I wanna isolate this building, I'm gonna hit mask. So watch when I hit mask, the background's gonna disappear, right? So now this building has been selected. Now it's, it's just a mask, 
So if I were to select this and move it around, it looks like it's isolated, but it's just masked out. The sky is actually, everything is still there. It's, it's non-destructive, but um, I'm masking it out so the, the background disappears. So, and since that's done, I could add a background and all of a sudden I'm on really, really good drugs it looks like, right? So I've added a new background. That's one quick way to isolate things. And I'll show you now in the next example how you can select something and then really refine it using the pen tool, which is mostly what I do. So let's go to the next example here. Okay, so I got these bananas here. Now, I could probably use another tool to select this. And over here, the selection brush tool would probably be great because there's a good contrast. But right over here, the yellow to yellow and here it might get blurred and really not give me a clean, uh, like a clean outline. And also in here it might give me a hard time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my pen tool. My picture selected, I'm grabbing my pen tool. Now this time I'm gonna be in pen mode and at the top I'm gonna be in rubber band mode. And that was that one where you could click and sort of drag it to make it go around the curve. And I'm gonna do this super fast, so it won't be perfect, but I just wanna show you. So I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna click here. I'm just gonna slowly drag my mouse. See these handles? I'm gonna click and hold and just kind of slightly drag it out to make it more of not such a straight line, but a curve to go around this banana. And again, this won't be perfect because I'm just trying to do this really quick. I don't want anyone being like, you know what? I'm not watching this guy cut out a banana for nine minutes. Um, so we're just gonna go through here. I'm gonna click up here. And again, with uh, with selections, when you get into these kind of things, and it's a, it's it's part of a multi-composition photo, um, a lot of these things don't um, they don't really come they don't look so bad um, in a in a larger selection. So I'm going to show you when I get more to this curved part up here. I'm gonna click this banana. I'm going to click and just start rounding this out here in this curve. I'll zoom in so you can see this. So if I click here, I'm going to click and drag it out to make it sort of match up as best I can. I'm going to click here. I'm gonna hold and drag these bezier handles out to sort of start forming around the banana, right? Just as best I can as I do this quickly. We're just gonna finish this off really fast so I don't lose everyone's attention. By no means is this perfect. These selections always take time. I'm just trying to give you guys a quick example of how you would use this. And I'm just clicking and dragging and clicking and dragging. Some are just click and point, click and point. Let's get around this banana, shall we, everybody? I know it's super exciting. Okay, so I'm closing the curve off. So you'll see when I close the curve off again. So in the top left corner, I have mask or I have selection. Because I want to isolate this banana from the background, bananas, I'm going to hit mask. And when I do that, you see the background disappears. Um, <clears throat> and I have it isolated. Okay, great. But I want to get this spot in here. And grabbing the selection brush tool or grab, grabbing something else may not work perfect. So this is usually what I do. I like to use the selection brush tool. And then when I want to really refine something, I grab the pen tool. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to select the bananas in my layers panel. I'm grabbing my pen tool. I'm in pen mode with rubber band mode selected. And I'm just going to quickly click in here. I'm just going to drag around uh, the best quick selection I can do here. Uh -huh. And so when I close this off, this time you'll notice in the top corner, instead of hitting mask, because I don't want to get rid of everything else. I just want to get rid of this. I'm going to hit selection. So when I hit selection, the marching ants are going to appear. So right now, this is the only thing that is selected right now. I have a particular selection uh, up on my screen. Now I'm going to go to my eraser tool because I want to get rid of this. I'm going to pull my eraser tool out and inside the selection that I've created, I'm just going to start dragging my mouse. And if I go over here, it's not going to hurt anything because it just is going to erase what's actually selected. Now that that's removed, to stop my selection, to turn my selection off, I'm going to hit Command D. You would hit Control D on a PC. I'm going to zoom out. And now that selection is pretty clean. Now, I will show you that uh, in another example here. So let's go to this guy. Okay, so let me turn on the original photo. Okay, so this is the original photo. I went around, I took the selection brush tool, and I tried to select this guy as best I could. Now there's shadows in here and in here, and you'll see. So once the selection was made, which is this here, you can see in here there's a ton of noise it's not very clean in here that's not very clean because the selection brush tool with the shadows just couldn't do it this is where i use the pen tool so i've got my thing selected i'm going to grab my pen tool again i'm in pen uh, mode with rubber band mode and what i'm going to do is zoom in here and i'm just going to zoom into his coat and i'm just going to make a quick selection of this because i want to clean all of this up i'm going to go through here and here and here make this really quick everybody just to show you how you can clean this up. Again, like I said, I usually use the selection brush tool for most things that I can, and then the pen tool to clean things up, uh, the really refined areas to make it really look sharp. Okay, so I've closed my selection. You can see it's here. In the top left corner now, I'm gonna hit selection again. 
the marching ants are going to appear. Now that I have what I want selected, I want to get rid of this. I'm going to go to my eraser tool right here. Uh, you can hit E on your keyboard. And then I'm just going to start erasing all the stuff that I don't want. And if I hit Command D to deselect, Control D on a PC and zoom out, you can see that selection looks a lot cleaner right here as opposed to this arm, right? And again, you can try to go around with an eraser and try to make it clean, but see, you always with an eraser, you always fear that you do this, right? You're trying to get this. You can turn your you can turn your um, eraser down and try to make it smaller, but it's really hard to to without taking away from the selection, right? So pen tool for this kind of stuff is great. So that's the selection brush tool, what it does, this is selection brush tool with the um, pen tool doing an isolation. Now, uh, this one here, I'm not going to go through and do it. I'm actually going to throw up on screen right now uh, a movie poster I created called Murder After Midnight, and it shows you how I put this particular car into a photo composition. Now, just quick quick warning here, it's a speed edit, so you're not going to sit there and watch it, and it's not going to show you exactly how everything's done, because everything is sped up to show, to show you how to get to the final, or to show the final piece of art. Um, so it's not something you're going to watch step by step and learn. Those are coming. I'm going to do those next. I just want to show you how I use the pen tool on this particular car to edit it into a photo composition with four other photos and make a movie poster. So thank you for watching this video. If it was helpful in any way at all, would you please just tap dance over to that like button and just tap, tap, tap. And if you've never seen my stuff before, and this is helpful for you, would you, could, what could I do to get you to subscribe? Huh? Let's be friends. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks.